Jesus is coming. This is this is about Jesus coming uh, for the rapture. It's an animation of the rapture happening. Jesus coming for the rapture. That's Jesus coming with all his holy angels are showing here. Praise the Lord Jesus. What a wonderful day it'll be for those that make the rap. 
And what a bad day it'll be for those that don't. But oh, what a wonderful day it'll be for those that do make like that. Can you imagine? Wedding ring clips at then. In that video, guys, uh, I was talking about. Uh, I changed the name of that video because uh, I, I forgot to tell that in the video though that it was, it was lasted the whole thing lasted right around three hours or three hours. You know the total the whole eclipse from the time it started to the time it ended, and uh, which may have been the sign of Jonah in the Bible. I think I got that pulled up here somewhere. Wait a minute. Okay, right here. Uh, so it lasted three hours. You know, Jonah was in the belly of the well three uh, days and three nights, and Jesus carried all the way to the world's sins on the cross when he was crucified and put to death for our sins to pay the price for debts well for sins. Jesus took God's wrath in our place to pay the price for debts well for our sins so we could be forgiven so God could forgive us our sins he carried the weight of the world's sins on Jesus Jesus did uh, for three hours so God had to turn his back on Jesus Jesus because he's in darkness even though he was a spotless and innocent lamb of God and was totally innocent he carried all of our sins my sins and your sins and everybody every, the whole world's sins everybody that ever lived all all the sins of everyone that ever lived on on, uh, on him and God had turned his back on him, so he's in darkness for three hours on the cross. So this sign, he said um, in Matthew 12, 39, he answered a wicked and adulterous generation asked for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Matthew 16, 4, a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. Uh, so... Uh, this could be the sign of Jonah, and somebody else said they uh, were showed by the Lord uh, that it was the sign of Jonah, this uh, wedding ring eclipse right after Christmas. And uh, so it may... Be. Oh, and I got in my last video before this one, uh, I showed the... I recorded it live, and it looked like a wedding ring eclipse, and it went behind the clouds just after it looked like a wedding, a wedding ring um, the eclipse. I recorded it live. It wasn't live when y'all watched it. You know, it had been recorded, but I recorded it till it got to that point. And uh, one of the uh, commenters wrote me and said, uh, he said, you notice how on your video it looked like a, uh, at one point it looked like a Pac-Man, like eating the, uh, uh, I don't know, eating the sun or moon, like it was eating the sun or moon. Uh, he said, uh, just like when uh, the, well, eight like Jonah. So that, that made sense. That's that's that was a good point. He said that is like another sign. So I want to tell you about that. And also, uh, Lindy and L, you know who you know who you are. One of my best commenters. I apologize. Uh, she wrote me in. Um, I apologize, Lindy. Uh, I didn't mean to. I got a little aggravated because I've been being attacked so much by people. I. I, I, if you go back and watch, look at my video again, I wrote you two comments. I was a little bit aggravated with you, but I wrote you back a nice comment to try to make up to you. I apologize, Lindy. I, I pray Jesus forgives me, and you was right. And I told you in the last video, just watch your the third comment I wrote you. Uh, you was probably you was probably right, and I or was right, and I will, I apologize to you. Just go back and watch it, Lindy. I'm sorry. I just being I get I get attacked so much. It just shoo. Uh, I know you didn't mean that by it, and you was just just go back and read the comment, please. The third one. I apologize, Lindy. I love you, Lindy. I love everyone, even the ones that write me bad comments. I apologize to anyone. I got, I got uh, 
you know, come back at it in the wrong way. I should handle it like the Lord handles it. So it's hard, though, when you're constantly attacked. Please forgive me. Will you forgive me, Jesus, for not handling things? When people write to me bad comments and mean comments, will you, will you forgive me, Jesus, for not handling it the way you do, Jesus? I apologize to anybody, guys, that I offended. I love every one of you guys, even the ones that write me bad comments. And let's see what else was I wanting to show you. I got so many things to show you, so many different videos. Let's see. Okay, I want to show you this. World War III is coming, guys. U.S. military plans new war fighting concept in response to threat from China, Russia. A series of war games led by the Pentagon's Joint Staff will evaluate new battle plans for fighting China and Russia, Pentagon officials say. What we don't have is a concept that accurately and with rigor describes how the services will fight against a peer adversary. Lieutenant General Eric Wesley, Deputy Commanding General of U.S. Army Futures Command and Director of Futures and Concept Center. Okay, I, ain't, that's just, I just want to show you that first part of that, okay? Let me see what we got to look, show you next. Bear with me a moment, guys. I got so many things I want to show you guys of what's going on. Uh, North Korea is, you know, they threatened to give a, a send to America, United States, a Christmas gift. You know, that could mean a nuclear missile. They said it could mean a nuclear missile test, ICBM test, but it could mean a nuclear missile to send to America where they could attack us with Russia and China. I got some more stuff showing on that. You know, they're angry over the sanctions that uh, the U.S. has put against North Korea. It's putting them in, uh, you know, their uh, economy is getting real bad and it's hurting our economy. And they said they give us, they give America to the end of the year to lift the sanctions cause, so they could still do something even after Christmas to the end of the year or, or, or after uh, any time. We just had that... Uh, Ring of Fire, Wedding Ring Eclipse, and, I, and I, it was like that could have been the sign of Jonah. And then let me show you. Hold on a minute, guys. Oh, I want to show you this. This is about a Russian spy ship off the U.S. coast selling selling recklessly off the U.S. coast. A Russian spy ship. Officials are warning of a maritime hazard off the southeastern U.S. coast. A Russian spy ship. CNN's Brian Todd is here with details. Uh, Brian, this uh, Russian vessel, what? It poses a threat? It does. It's, of course, there's a helicopter flying over the house. They do all the time to try to intimidate me. It sounds like a helicopter. They do all over my house all the time to try to intimidate me to stop me from doing these videos. So I apologize about the noise in the background. They actually, one night, there was like three or four of them started. They come down like they were going to land on my house. My wife was scared. To, she was real terrified about it. I said, don't be scared. And I put my faith and trust in Jesus. And, uh, you know, I said, put your faith in Jesus. Take care of us. I, don't be, it says, the Bible says, don't be afraid of man uh, that can kill the body. Be afraid of God and his son Jesus that can kill the body and the soul and, and spirit in hell. That's true. I, I'm not afraid of no man, only only God in heaven and his son Jesus. I'm only afraid of Jesus and his father God. Does, Wolf, you know, normally this ship, the Victor Leonov, menaces America's east coast with its spying operations. Tonight, it's not only doing that, but U.S. officials say it's putting other vessels in danger as well. It's known for playing Hunt for Red October style games with the U.S. Navy. That's a Russian But tonight, ship. according to U.S. officials, the Russian spy ship, the Viktor Leonov, is sailing recklessly right off America's shores. Two U.S. officials telling CNN the Leonov has been operating off the coasts of South Carolina and Florida in a, quote, unsafe manner, not using its lights in low visibility weather, not responding to signals from commercial ships, which are trying to avoid colliding with it. It's absolutely purposeful. Uh, first of all, this is an intelligence ship, so it's not going to disclose its point of location to anybody. They like to be able to intimidate people 
and bully them, and this is another way of doing that. The U.S. Coast Guard says the Leonov is making other erratic movements and tonight warns other ships to maintain a sharp lookout for the Russian spy ship. The Leonov has been prowling around America's east coast for more than four years, near some key U.S. Navy installations. Cape Canaveral, which handles underwater operations. Kings Bay, Georgia, home to nuclear missile submarines. Norfolk, the world's largest naval complex. And New London, Connecticut, another major submarine base. Experts say those U.S. bases offer a treasure trove of possible intelligence for Vladimir Putin's Navy. They'd be looking for the schedule of ships entering and leaving the port. They'd be trying to monitor as much of their communications as is possible. They would also be trying to monitor underwater developments if they could track submarines. Experts say Russian vessels have even been spying on undersea Internet cables. And the reason why they want the map of this is so that in future conflicts or crises, they actually have the opportunity, if they can, to attack it, destroy it, or otherwise tamper it. Okay, that's what I want to show you on that one. Do you see that? Order of three is a coming, guys. And also, uh, the asteroid NASA said could hit by around the 28th of December. And the people are having visions and dreams that an asteroid hits, uh, like in Revelation 8, 8, chapter 8, verse 8. Uh, people are having visions and dreams of an asteroid that looks like a mountain hitting, burning, burning with fire on fire. Coming down, landing in the ocean, and turning, uh, cause a tsunami and turning the water to blood, and just like the Revelation 8 8 pretty much says, and uh, and said it hit around Christmas. I have vision. They didn't say what what year though. NASA said it hit this year for Christmas around the 28th of December. Of course, they could be off a little bit, or they could be lying about the exact date. And let's see what else I want to show you. I want to show you, but you know, Russia's side me, so I want to show you a little bit about this. That's, I mean, it's a torpedo that's very powerful, that can cause a tsunami off the coast of America, or detonate off America's coast. Very powerful. Shot out a submarine, a doomsday weapon, I said. That's it. President Vladimir Putin, during his State of the Nation address to the Russian Federation Assembly in March, showcased several weapons. One of them was Poseidon, status 6, unmanned underwater drone. It will be carried by a new nuclear-powered submarine currently under construction. Now, that's not Poseidon under construction anymore because this video has been done a while ago. It's, it's already, already in the fleet being used the way I understand it. This video has been done a little while ago. So it's, it's already out there being used in the it's already in the fleet being used the way I understand now. ...poses a real challenge to Russia's rivals. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why Russia's Poseidon unmanned underwater drone is a doomsday weapon. Let's get started. The torpedo-shaped robotic mini-submarine can travel at speeds of up to 100 knots. That's 185 kilometers per hour. It has a range of 6,200 miles, 10,000 kilometers, and can travel at a maximum depth of 3,280 feet, or 1,000 meters. This underwater drone is perceived to have stealth technology to avoid detection. As per Russian sources, Poseidon is armed with a mammoth 100 megaton warhead. To give it's armed with a 100 megaton, not kiloton, megaton, 100 megaton warhead. Do you understand how big it is? Viewers a perspective, here's a comparison. Trinity test in New Mexico in July 1945, which ushered in the nuclear age, had a yield of 20 kilotons. Hiroshima's little boy bomb had a yield of 13 to 18 kilotons. So 20 or 21 kilotons and then 13, 18, the Hiroshima bomb and the Nagasaki had 13 to 18, one of them and one of them 20, or something, a lot of people say 21 kilotons. That's only kilotons. This, this Poseidon nuclear torpedo has a 100 megaton. No, I mean, I'll show you, like, one megaton equals a thousand kilotons. You understand? One megaton is a thousand me uh, kilotons. And here, the fat boy or whatever is only like 21 or 20 meg uh, kilotons. 20 or 21 kilotons, and this thing's like a uh, hundred megatons, which, oh my gosh, and each, kilo each megaton is a thousand kilotons. 
and it's 100 megatons. Phew, that's a lot, guys. That's huge. Whereas Nagasaki's Fat Man bomb had a yield of 20 to 22 kilotons of TNT. Well, I've heard 20 to 22 kilotons for Fat Boy or whatever it's called. You want it land on Hiroshima, I guess. Poseidon has the potential for multiple strategic uses. These could be some of its mission. One, making nuclear tsunamis to flood and radioactively contaminate rival coasts. This weapon could create a tsunami wave up to 500 meters tall that will radioactively contaminate large parts of enemy's coastline. Poseidon could be armed with a cobalt bomb. A cobalt bomb is a type of salted bomb, a nuclear weapon designed to produce enhanced amounts of radioactive fallout intended to contaminate a large area with radioactive material. Upon detonation, Cobalt-59 would be transmuted into Cobalt-60, a highly radioactive particle with a half-life of more than five years. It will cause massive devastation, rendering large areas unusable for years. No country in the world has yet tested a Cobalt bomb due to the devastating radiation it would unleash. 2. Destroying Naval Bases being much smaller than a traditional submarine, the Poseidon could sneak very close to enemy's naval bases and detonate itself, causing tremendous damage to enemy's naval assets, like warships or submarine fleet. 3. Destroying U.S. Aircraft Carriers Russia's main rival, U.S., has about 10 supercarriers in active service. These have been used to project power much beyond the American homeland. Poseidon could be assigned to neutralize U.S. carriers. Russia could quietly pre-position a few of these on the floor of the oceans, then remotely activate when in strike distance of a U.S. carrier group. 4. Destroy U.S. SSBN Fleet U.S. currently has an Ohio SSBN fleet of 14 vessels. This is scheduled to decline to 12 Columbia SSBNs in the future. On any given day, half of U.S. SSBN are in port and other half are patrolling at sea. So the most credibly survivable leg of the entire U.S. nuclear triad is only about six to seven submarines. Poseidon could be used to tail these submarines and attack them on command. Even a robot submarine of Ohio class may not survive a 100 megaton warhead, even when detonated 100 kilometers away. Yeah, that's, that's huge, guys. And, do you, uh, you know, on our new $100 bill that shows the New York City getting... Uh, taken out by a huge tsunami and it has nuclear fallout it looks like it has nuclear fallout uh, in the uh tsunami and you heard how bad the nuclear fallout they could make up side and ha have uh that would be horrible and the wave coming in the tsunami if russia and once the russia sends it out or, or or it starts its mission that torpedo they can't stop it they can't turn around it could very well be what causes that uh, tsunami in New York City and uh, nuclear fallout. Uh, or it could be from that uh, asteroid that's coming, the one in Revelation 8.8 8 talks about. I saw something brought to my mind the other day. I saw in my mind a sweatshirt had New York City on it, and another one I, I saw had uh, Chicago on it. So maybe something's coming to those areas, maybe nukes, maybe nukes, or like the nuclear side and torpedo coming to New York and the East Coast and uh, somebody had a dream the other day that they're going to attack a lot of the real high population area cities with nuclear weapons. They said, okay, let's see what else I've got here. Did you guys see this? There was a, a, a submarine. Let me just show you this. It's a, either a U.S. nuclear submarine or, you know, in the South China Sea, South China Sea, where... China has been building them artificial islands, build military bases on them. They don't want nobody in that area. And the you know, U.S. wants to keep that open for trade routes and stuff. So they've been challenging the Chinese uh, and, put, you know, going, taking the ships through there anyways, even though China's threatening them. This could start World War III, too. And uh, so uh, there, uh, there was some kind of explosion. There may have been a fight between Chinese and Russian, uh, I mean, Chinese and American submarines because I'll let you watch this, but some people saying it was the Chinese uh, submarine. Got, it's about around November 21st of this year, 2019. This happened about a month ago. And they're saying it could have been a U.S. submarine that got exploded in the ocean on November 21st, 2019, or Chinese, and, and maybe it was a maritime battle. 
between U.S. and China in the South China Sea. Let me show you that in the South China Sea. Let me get it started first. Okay. Uh, on November 20th, a uh, uh, law placed on the 21st, a nuclear explosion occurred in the South China Sea at a depth of 50 meters, which was caused uh, caused a shockwave of great strength, which was uh, recorded by the sensors. Showed up as a earthquake or something. I thought they said. I thought one one YouTube video said that. And this says, uh, an increase in radioactive levels has been reported uh, in China and on the island of Taiwan. The, the news portal Harold Turner published a map with an explosion point as well as readings from the URAD Monitor Global Environment Monitoring Network. Uh, where significant uh, radiation indicators are recorded. I can't see too good, guys. My eyes have to get worse. Do the best I can. I need glasses. <laughs> oh, and that said something. Let me back it up just a hair bit. Let's see what that said. I need my magnifying glass. There has been an incident in the South China Sea uh, radiation detected. Okay, let me get it back to where it was. Radiation detected. Uh, the estimated power of the explosion ranged from 10 to 20 kilotons, about the same size as that fat boy, uh, Hiroshima, they, put, they used against Hiroshima. Uh, uh, let me read that again. The estimated power of the explosion ranged from 10 to 20 kilotons. In this case, an earthquake did not occur because it was that. It didn't cause an earthquake, they said, but I heard somebody else thought, I thought somebody else said it did show up as an earthquake. I could be wrong. A few days after the explosion, the resident of the Japanese island of Maoko discovered in the shore a cylinder with the inscription in English, uh, let's see, uh, in English said uranium fuel rod. And a few days after the explosion, a, res a resident of the Japanese island of Mayeko discovered on the shore a cylinder with the inscription in English, an, Eng an inscription on it. He discovered a cylinder on the shore. He dis on the shore. He discovered a cylinder with an inscription in English that said uranium fuel rod on it. See that? Okay, and then it says, are these two incidents related? Is related? It is still unclear. Although Mayaku Island is located in East China Sea. In the South China Sea, American nuclear submarines are on duty. According to experts, an accident could have occurred on one of these submarines. Russia's detected the uh, radiation there too. The Grab Media News Channel noted the activity of the American fleet in the area immediately after the explosion. Uh, let's see. Let me see what that's in my magnifying glass. 
Uh, covert USS Gabriel Giffords entered the territorial waters which which China considered its own. So that US submarine entered the waters which China considered its own. Uh, then his maneuver was repeated by the USS Wayne E. Meyer missile destroyer. The Pentagon has not yet made any official statements about this incident. According to experts, the United States carefully hides all incidents with the submarines um, since the mid-1950s. According to experts, the United States carefully hides all incidents with the submarines since the mid-1950s, so they wouldn't tell it. If something happened between China and America, like a maritime battle, a lot of people are saying it was a Chinese submarine that got attacked and sunk or destroyed by an American submarine or in a maritime battle with the U.S. is a nuclear submarine because there's radiation picking up. Must have been, they said. Huge amounts of radiation in that area now. The experts claim that most likely uh, this time we again won't know what really happened to the U.S. nuclear submarine. World War III is coming, guys. Oh, that's not it. All right. And let's see what else I want to show you. Yeah, I'll see this. Or about, there's earthquakes going on like, like, I mean, more than ever around the world. There was... British Columbia has been hit with another two earthquakes, bringing the total to nine over three days. The latest quake struck just off Vancouver Island on Christmas Day. The larger of the two was a magnitude 4.9. A series of six quakes were recorded on Monday. A seventh, a powerful magnitude 6.2, struck just off Port Hardy on Christmas Eve. There are no reports of any major damage. For more on this, let's bring in John Cassidy. He's a seismologist from Natural Resources Okay. Uh, he he goes on to say that this is not uh, this is not normal. This is something going on because he said it's it's not normal. Let me find the next thing I want to show you. Have y'all seen that uh, 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 about this uh, a big and bizarre drone mystery is unfolding in rural Colorado? Uh, Let's see, the, the sparse expanse of northeast Colorado have become ground zero for a bizarre mystery surrounding sightings of nighttime uh, coordinated flights of groups of drones from roughly 7 to 10 p.m. every night uh, last week. The, an estimated 17, drone, 17 drones with, every night from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. with six-foot wingspans have flown grid patterns over Phillip County and near its border with neighboring Yuma County. According to Phillips County Sheriff Thomas Elliott, Thomas Elliott, the drones operated a few hundred feet in the air and were uh, brightly lit with, with strobing colored and, uh, and white lights, leaving local residents and those driving through the area baffled. The Denver Post was first to report the string of strange sightings. Local law enforcement, the FAA, DAA, U.S. Army, and Air Force have said they have no idea what these aircraft are or who they belong to. Uh, the sheriff's office can't explain where the drones are coming from or who is flying them. The estimated size and number of drones makes it unlikely that they're being flown by hobbyists. Under Sheriff uh, William Myers said, "Get this, guys. Uh, I have, I have. We uh, live on a farm in Southwest Virginia, and we've been seeing them around here. Could that be? Uh, could that be the Russians and you know doing that to spy on America before they attack?" Or could it be our government spying on us and the New World Order the Antichrist B system spying on everyone? They've been flying over our farm. I seen them. My father, my neighbor, my father, which is my father in law, father in law, mother in law, uh, my wife's mom and dad, they live down below us, they're a neighbor. And they, they've they seen them. I mean, my, my father in law, my wife's dad has seen them here, and I've seen them. I've seen them as 
a big looking two and really not six foot like him i don't think it was really weird looking never seen one like it. and then get this about uh our neighbor he's a, a, they live on, on a farm next to us our neighbors and uh they, they live on the farm that joins our farm and they it's a man and his wife and he's older and he's got two uh sons close to my age but they're not as old as i am i'm about 50 years old and they're probably about 40 something or early 40s or mid 40s and uh he's got two sons one of them lives in a house neighbor neighbor to him and then another one is, is a neighbor to him and lives in another another place uh next to next to the, the father well, one of the sons i think it's the younger one he come up here one day and i heard him out there revving his engine he was he was fussing trying to get my wife he, he was uh fussing about my wife and i, I went to outside and, and he was pulling out of the driveway and he said then he said he, he was mad and he saw me and he he was real respectable and he said me that seen me though he was he, uh, first he was fussing i come out there and he said uh sir can i talk to you a minute and he knows me and uh i said yeah what is it and his and i, I told i asked you know by his name i said what's going on he said why are you all keep flying them drones down there above my house and what are y'all doing? He said, all the time y'all were doing that. He said, if you don't mind, would you quit doing that? And I said, I said, we ain't doing that. I said, we ain't even got it. And at the time, we didn't have a we didn't have a drone. We really didn't. And uh, we told him we ain't doing it. Well, I told him we ain't doing it, and my wife later did. And uh, you know, we thought he was sort of my my. You know, I hate to say it, but might have been out there a little bit at first. You know, because uh, uh, I think it's before we seen the drones that we seen. I only seen one, and my father seen one. But he was saying they was all the time coming down and around his house, coming down above his head, and he was trying to shoot him down and stuff. And uh, so then, uh, I mean, he he jumped on my wife about it, and I ain't gonna tell you what all will happen with that. But I forgive him. That's all right. I love I love my neighbors. I forgive anybody. And but he he was really mad about it, and angry about it. And uh, I guess you can't blame him if he thought somebody was doing. And, you know, finally, but we ought to know we were doing it, but that's all right. And uh, his his mom and dad said they thought the same thing. as awful weird of him thinking that, and they, they didn't really believe it neither. But then his other, his brother that lives down from me, uh, his neighbor, him, he said, uh, his wife said she saw him too. But, well, we told her that we'd been seeing him, and so she said, really? And because uh, they was thinking like you might be out there a little bit too at first and we said no we seen one and i seen one uh, my wife told her that her, her husband me i seen one and her dad seen one and she said really and then she started seeing them flying around down there so there's some weird things going on and we live in southwest virginia let me show you if i was one oh i don't know what else i was want to show you here oh i got some more stuff i was want to show you but I ain't really got time on this video. Guys, I love you guys. I will try to see you on the next video. I had lots of things I'm going to show you. I ain't going to have time to show you all of it, though. But an asteroid could hit any time now. We just had probably the sign of Jonah, maybe. Uh, guys, we're in the last day. Jesus Jesus Christ is getting ready to return any, any moment. I do believe it. I really do. And... Uh, we, I don't think we have much time left at all before uh, Jesus Christ shows up in the sky and busts the sky open and uh, starts pouring his righteous, righteous judgment on this evil world and rescue, rescues and raptures his bride to bride of Christ. Be ready, be you ready. The Bible says be you ready. If Are you ready? If you ain't saved by Jesus, please get saved by the Lord Jesus. He is coming. You want to be right with him. You don't want to be on his bad side when Jesus comes back. Trust me. You want to be on his good side. So please get saved by Jesus and seek him with all your heart, mind, and soul, and spirit. The Bible says when you seek him with all your heart, mind, and soul is when you find him. It's when you find Jesus. And then pray that he fills you with the Holy Spirit. First, repent of your sins. Ask Jesus to forgive you your sins. And we need to try to turn from known sins the best we can. And uh, and uh, then when we, if, you know, pray the Lord shows you any other sin in your life that you need to, or anything else you need to change your life in your walk with Jesus or any sin in your life you need to turn away from and you walk with the Lord Jesus and then when you do sin when we do sin which I do all the time I make mistakes and sin but we need to turn away from our known sins the best we can and when we do sin we need to repent of our sins guys all right guys I love you I'll see y'all in the next video bye